Shall we move to the next topic or?
put these numbers here, and so you want to understand that. Uh, and so now we know uh, to get essentially a PRG, I'll tell you exactly what I mean, but the seed length is better, and I want to tell you how, what's the techniques that are being used, something like that. So now that's great. We call it liberated, because it's not chained to the login, Nissan's login. Uh, I have this picture in mind of the, this guy from the Greek mythology that uh, you now goes out the mountain, I forget the name. Sisyphus, right, so it's like chained to the login. Other than that, the whole analogy breaks. Uh, <laughs> so we have that, but not for PRGs. We have it for what we call the weighted PRGs. And a weighted PRG is the same thing as a PRG. So in a PRG, right, you have instructions for every seed. And you know that given a branching program, well, you follow these instructions and uh, average the number of times you got to the accept state, you get a good approximation. In weighted PRG, you also have weights, like real numbers, could be negative, and that's the whole point, but they could be also large, like polynomially large in N, and negative. And still it's the case that when you, not average, but when you take the proper sum, so every instruction that led you to the accept state, you add the corresponding weight, the weights are negative and positive, and they are large. They are not between 0 and 1. They are large, actually. But somehow, they cancel out uh, so that at the end, you get uh, epsilon approximations. Yes. So, right. So, the PRG, or the weighted PRG, for every seed, it has an uh, instruction and a weight. Right. So, there are, like, uh, pairs of those. It could be negative. It could be negative. <laughs> Minus 7, yeah. Right, right. And I think this question is, how can this help you? Like, uh, it's a, I mean, two things are weird. These are large numbers. None of them is between 0 and 1, usually. They are like poly and large. And at the end of the day, they sum up to a number between 0 and 1. They're poly and large, and they are negative. So the way we initially think about negatives is that uh, you, you need it for cancellations. Uh, so you go back and forth, but it's really hard to kind of stay with this mindset. So let me tell you a different reason why the negatives are here. Like, uh, initially, there was a construction that this, that, uh, did, did that. It was complicated, and, uh, you know, and there was a reason for the negatives. Now we know how to prove that you, in a sense, kind of need negatives. Uh, you know. Okay, we'll see. And, uh, and, uh, but, but after that came like, two papers that explained the, the, like, the role of negativity in a better way. So let me tell you what's that, and it's really, uh, uh, I think, really nice. And from that point on, a lot of things happened. Uh, like, for example, the way uh, fax 2 was improved is based on that. And essentially, every, everything afterwards was based on those things. So that started, like, in 2018. So it's not completely new. For me, it's, like, completely new, right? And I, was, I, I thought that 2015 is, like, for the last three years. At some point, you have like a dilation of time uh, thingy. Okay, so let me tell you the the, the second construction. So what, what's going on? So uh, here is a thing that you uh, may, may have heard about if you did optimization, actually. So, uh, okay, so say you have a, here, here's the magic, okay? It's kind of a magic. Oh, and let me remind you of another magic at the end, like real magic. Okay. Like it's, it's science, but it looks magical. So uh, say you have like a, we want to take powers, right? That's what we do here when you do uh, PRGs. We, construct, we take powers of matrices or approximates them. But uh, consider a different direction, which actually was before Nissan. It appeared in one paper before Nissan's paper, and everyone kind of, uh, once Nissan happened, everyone neglected that idea and then returned to it. So uh, consider, uh, say you have, you have a matrix that you like, and uh, let's call it let's call it L. It's going to be the Laplacian at the end. But the matrix that you like, and someone gave you uh, an approximation for its inverse. Let's assume it's invertible, an approximation for its inverse. So the way I'm going to uh, do that is I'm going to so this is the approximation for the inverse, and the way I'm going to uh, check 
how well is this how well this approximation is is looking at this thing, which is sensible, right? Sort of a, a multiplicative version. Like I'm asking, when you multiply those, how close is this to one? Uh, okay, you know maybe this is most epsilon zero. Maybe you have some error guarantee that you that you get. Good. That's a good, very good question. So uh, let's work with operator norm. Later papers actually tailored the norm to the matrix. They kind of judged the closeness in terms of the uh, well, they consider a PSD matrix that, that is related to that, and the PSD matrix give you a norm, and they judge it like that. But right, the initial papers uh, did it in, in any norm essentially. And here is a ma here's magic. I can give you a better approximation for the inverse, like with few operations, like very cheaply. Of course, I'm going to need to use the original matrix as well, because if you give me an error matrix and nothing else, I can't improve there. But if you give me this approximation and L cheaply in, in, in space and randomness and so forth, but I'm just going to write it on the board to agree that it's cheap, uh, I can improve the L. Uh, you can do that in powers. Actually, technically you can, but it's uh, more complicated to do it with powers. If I give you uh, an approximation of L to the N, I'm actually completely changing because we're working on this right now, but if you, if you are uh, taking the power of L to the N, it, it kind of, it's just one thing, it's L to the N. L inverse, if you think about it, is the sum of L plus L squared. So it's kind of the generating matrix. It has all the information. So it makes more sense that you can do things that it's more whole. But then you know, I just want to tell you the matrix. So the matrix is as follows. So R, R is for Richardson. RK, for any K that you want, I'm going to look at the following matrix. Um, I need to be careful not looking at the right matrix now. I think it should be okay. This is a matrix. Right? Uh, if k is like very small, if, if k is uh, like zero, you get the original one. Right? Because the, this this actually is out of the sum. So if k is zero, you get the original one. If your k is one, for example, then 2k equals one. If an R1 is, you know, you have, this goes outside, and you have two sum ends. The first is i, when this is zero, and the second is when this is one, right? So it's two i minus l inverse l, I think. Right, uh, when minus, yeah, thank you. It's i plus this, right? And this is outside of the sum, but you need to put it, it's non-commutative, so you need to put it there. And, and let's see. So let's see how R1 to what extent R1 is a good approximation in this sense to the inverse of L. So let's look at this expression. All right, let's check the norm of this thing. But forget about the norm, let's just look at this thing. So this thing, if I did correctly, I, I just need to do it, I don't know how to. Let's just open it up. There is a clever way if you are far away from the board, but when you're close, it's always harder. So I just open this up, I need to multiply by L, and subtract I. Right? And actually, I should have. Heard. So, uh, good. So, I think I'll leave one here and put one here. It's actually easier when you do it in general. And then I'm taking these two off, so I get y minus L inverse L. So, this is the i, this is that. And I'm taking this from the right plus, and let me write this just similar to that. And then you can see that you get i minus l square. Right. Yeah, that's zero. Yeah. Yes. In particular, the norm of this thing is epsilon zero square, of course. At least if it's a sub multiplicative norm. Like this means that, in particular, this means that R1 L minus I, again, if this was a sub-multiplicative norm, it was epsilon zero squared. Right. It's really weird. Yeah, yeah. You can do it, you can do it in squares like that, or you can take larger k's. And it's really weird. And there are like three ways of thinking, like I just wrote it down. Yes. 
there are three ways to come up to that like naturally, like re relatively natural. One way is for opti optimization. So what you do is you kind of, uh, so th there is an iterative process that happens, and I'm just writing the output. But in the iterative process, you always want to kind of, you, have, you, you, you want to consider a certain uh, minimization problem uh, related to that. I'm not sure it's exactly that then this norm is small. There is a trick, but some trick. And then you just do gradient descent. And if you collect what happened, you, you look at the iterations, you see what happened, and you write it as a polynomial, in LNN, that's what you get. Another way to look at it is that this is essentially, uh, but, it's, but this is because the previous two are related, is kind of a Taylor expansion in the sense of, uh, of the function 1 over x next to i, but in a non commutative setting. There are several ways of looking at it, but at the end of the day, that's what it is. Uh, and that's crazy. Actually right, so what really happens, so let me tell you how does it, like, so what do I want from it, right? Like, I mean, yeah. why shouldn't I just do the... Add a minus. Ah, yeah, right, right. Right, it's uh, even an adds, it uh, changes. But it doesn't mind. Right, I was forgetting this. Yeah. So, what, you know, what, what's, you know, what, what's the point of doing that? So the point is the following. So here is, here is a way to, I mean, I'm not going to give you everything, but just the idea. Uh, what's going on here is actually stronger than what I said. In the original paper, it was what I said, but what's going on is that you're going to take a PRG with bad dependence on epsilon, and there is a, this, you can translate this equation to a black box algorithm, so it's still a PRG in the sense that it doesn't look at the input, even though it looks like it looks at the input, uh, that produces a PRG, or more accurately, a weighted PRG that has a better error. So you need an inner PRG to start with, and you kind of do error reduction. Right. So we need to uh, use a PRG, and that all it gives us is uh, just matrix exponentiation. And we need somehow to translate it to an inverse of to an inverse problem. And the trick, which appeared in the paper before Nizam, kind of funny, not for these purposes. Uh, actually, that's also a, a something related. You do it with uh, shallow circuits, but I'm, I'm going to do something else. But that's related also. Okay, good. Uh, so you look at this matrix. So you look at that's why I say it's a plus, yeah? So say the matrix that you want to take its power is A. So you put A here on the kind of second diagonal and I in the first diagonal. So you can, if you think of it as the just symmetrics, uh, oh, uh, yeah, maybe I'm wrong with the minuses or something, but I think it's fine. This is, uh, maybe there should be minuses here, I'm not sure. Because the Lapla this is the, Pla the Laplacian of the matrix whose, whose here has nothing, right? It's I minus something. And here has only A's. So it really is doing like a, you think of it as a graph and you take a walk, but you remember the step that you are, step one, step two. All right, so if you have a graph and you do this thing, then it means that you're looking at a, you kind of uh, duplicate a graph maybe twice or three times, and you take a step in A, but move to the next copy. And that's what this kind of thing does. And this is the Laplacian, because you do I minus. And never mind, really. But what's really interesting is that if you look at the L inverse of that, then uh, what you get, that's an exercise, uh, at least if you got the sign right, you get i's in the diagonal, a is below the diagonal, a is squared below the diagonal, and so forth. You can, you can imagine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Right, so uh, you duplicate a, so maybe A was a W by W matrix. So now it's maybe NW or N plus 1W. And also here. Because you keep track like the clock. So you have the size. That's the read one's a bunch of programs. The, the graph size increases from W to. If you have different matrices, you can just put them on A1, A2, AN. Then you get A1, A2, A1, A2, A2, A2 A3. Yeah. Yeah, probably, yes, yes. 
calculating the, the, that, like the observation, if that's in fact that it's a totally loose vector, and you multiply them. Right, but we only care about space. That's a space problem. Uh, the normal life of oh, We think okay. of the there are no more matrix. Okay, right. So the point is, you know, you don't have that. I mean, that's you, you want this thing. That's what you want in life. You don't have that, but you can use a PRG to get something that's close to that. Right? So you can use a PRG to just mimic this matrix using your PRG. So you put the powers here. You get a matrix that is close to this thing, maybe up to a multiple of n because you did n changes per row, anyhow. And that's going to be the input to this Richardson iteration. You do the Richardson iteration, and I don't mean it algorithmically, I mean you interpret this formula as a way of doing it in a black box manner, as a way of, like it's a formula, it doesn't depend on the input. It depends only in the sense that it's a formula in the input. But the formula structure is independent of the input. Like x squared plus one is not it's not a formula that depends on x. Its input is x. Right? It's like, uh, so you can uh, you can actually uh, figure out a way of um, taking that uh, as a recipe for taking this thing. And these are PRGs, right? There are seeds here and so forth. I'm writing the matrices, but actually there are seeds, instructions, what have you. And you do the Richardson, and the end of the day you get a matrix of the same. You know, structure, and at the bottom there will be a better approximation of a to the n, because that's a better approximation of a, and that's how you do it really. It's kind of a. So if you do it correctly, and there are like you need to do it kind of carefully, you need to do like inner PRG, outer PRG. You need to there are some technical work, but at the end of the day it gets you done. Right. So you start with a PRG with Nissan's PRG, but you put epsilon to be like one over n. So that you know you can do it. It's any for free at this point, uh, and then you'll get that. So actually, uh, the like pseudo inverse is your generator. Your uh, pseudo inverse, uh, you construct it from the from the generator that you started. Actually, what really happens is any any if any PRG that you started it started with had seed S, then you're going to have seed which is this thing. So it's kind of like one times that. So optimal. And the one times is because we, we are using I and W. If you remember, I and W has the good dependence on sigma. Anyhow, it's a, use I and W, any sun, and everything uh, to get those. Uh, and uh, right, good. Yes, so that's the point. So you're looking at this formula. When you open it up, you get minuses. Right? So I mean, you open this up. You get a polynomial of degree k with essentially all monomials. Mm -hmm. And every monomial, I think of it as a kind of a short branching program. It multiplies certain matrices. So I'm going to use a PLG for that monomial, but weight it accordingly to the sign, the coefficient. And actually, they are not just plus and minuses because, yeah, it's, it's kind of more complicated. Isn't it kind of a cheating for you because like, you have to approximate the power meter? Yeah, so that's why it's a. Reduction. So if you have a, a way of uh, approximating the powerings, you kind of wrap it up as an inverse, plug it to this machine, black box it accordingly, and then you get a, a better power. Inverse. Ah, these are small powers. So K is like, a, yeah, that's, I mean, K is like, so it depends on things, but K is uh, so small compared yeah, to the other powers. Or the ah, I see. Right. So when you open this up, what you're what you're saying can be translated to when you open this up, you get a monomial, a polynomial, and you know maybe you have these, that, all this kind of stuff like that, and so you use a, a, a second PRG in order to fool this thing, right? So there is a PRG that in, gives you an inverse tilde, and then there's the PRG that pulls uh, this short branching program. I can think of it as a short branch. It's a power, it's a meta multiplication. So for me, it's a branching program. So it's a short branching program. Now the cool thing about this Richardson is that it keeps keeps on going. So I mean, uh, if you remember Sachs and Jew, then in a really I mean kind of magical paper, uh, two students from Harvard were able to 
do sac jour without the without the shifts no extra anomalies so the the use the Richardson iterations to kind of reduce error because right we said you know if you reduce error you're close to something and so forth uh, so they use that as a component and uh, the same idea that I liked in the two source extractor construction right so Braverman result was used to say well my analysis uh, works I mean my analysis is so simple I mean my component my algorithm is so simple that in the analysis I can assume I give it uh, uniform bits even though I give it like pseudo random bits that's that's the general idea right you have think about it it's kind of crazy you have you have a proof like a proof you write you have a proof of paper at the paper and then at some point and you at, at that proof should back up your algorithm it should be it should like your algorithm right it's it's they, they have the same goal and but the point is at some point you say you know what the algorithm is so weak that i'm analyzing that if I'm going to feed it with some non-uniform random bits, like pseudo random, pseudo smile, then uh, it is as if I got it, I gave it uh, truly random bits. And they do that also in this case as well. Uh, it's kind of remarkable. But now not for AC0 second, but for branching programs. They said, you know, there is a branching program that detects when my analysis, uh, if my analysis uh, fails to understand, I gave it uniform versus non-uniform. Uh, they did sac jour, so uh, sorry, it's hard to kind of share credit signal, but essentially they, they did sac jour without shifting. Uh, so it's a very different proof. It's actually easier, uh, I mean, given that, uh, with this uh, seedling. So in sac jour, you also have that. Uh, not in sac jour. Yeah, in sac jour, you also have that. Sorry. So we knew how to do that, but then they did that using these ideas. And like two days ago, there was a paper on Archive. I'm not sure if it's correct. I never read it. I should read it uh, fast. And it puts uh, uh, BPL. So I don't know how, how fond of you of like low complexity classes. So everyone knows that it's NC2, the logarithmic log square of NDEF, everything you can do in log square. And AC1 is smaller than that, if you know it. And they put it here using Richardson. Remarkable. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, same guy, same, same algorithm. Right, but it was known before. No, I mean for the randomization, right? At the end of the day, W is N. But this tells you that you can power a matrix of you know quite a large size. Uh, to power n uh, in optimal space, which is interesting. Uh, okay, so right, so let's have a break, and afterwards I tell you a magic about space, a little magic, and then we move to like maybe ten minutes about the next, maybe twenty minutes about the next two courses, and then half an hour for. Uh,